Today, I'd like to discuss the potential impact of forced settlement or one-day clearing, suggesting that it could lead to as many as five-day short squeezes or the equivalent of experiencing 5,000 game stops in a single day. I came across an internet interview, and now I'd like to discuss China's recent official prohibition of all short selling, which takes effect from today onward. Hey, welcome to a MC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell, so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Kristen Shaughnessy shared an interview on Twitter, including a quote indicating that if a sudden shutdown were to occur, we could witness the equivalent of 5,000 GameStops happening. This suggests a strategy of alerting short sellers to gradually cover their positions before the forced settlement is put into effect, indicating that the SEC is taking unprecedented actions, predicting that it will lead to chaos. The interview highlighted some intriguing points, aligning with topics I've been discussing for quite some time. The initial observation revolves around the statement, indicating that short positions are being closed in prominent companies such as NVIDIA, AMD, and Apple. This trend is then extending to less prominent entities like Carvana, Upstart, and Affirm, which are heavily shorted, culminating in the eventual closure of short positions in AMC. GameStop is essentially conveying that the current surge in the market, particularly in major tech stocks, is a result of short positions being closed in prominent companies such as NVIDIA, AMD, and others. Furthermore, this is the reason behind the notable upward pressure on other significantly shorted stocks like Coinbase, Carvana, Upstart, and more, particularly in recent weeks. This trend is occurring as short positions gradually shift from larger entities to smaller ones. The motivation behind this move lies in hedge funds attempting to transfer their failures to deliver FTDS between various funds creating a challenge potentially rendering it extremely difficult or even impossible to execute such transfers on the same day, especially when aiming to evade settlement or force closure. This is happening because the SEC is transitioning from a two-day settlement period to a one-day settlement period with the eventual goal of achieving zero-day settlement. Once more, it's evident that short sellers are engaged in a game of passing the parcel or playing hot potato with their short positions. Their aim is to circulate these positions, attempting to decrease the number of failures to deliver FTDS, or, at the very least, prevent AMC from entering the threshold securities list due to the challenges they face in closing out these short positions. Essentially, their goal is to reset the clock and timer each day, a task that would be nearly impossible to achieve with a zero-day settlement. We're aware that smaller hedge funds are facing financial distress and are transferring their short positions to larger hedge funds or significant market makers, leaving the latter entities to bear the consequences. By holding the bag, he refers to being responsible for managing the heap of hazardous assets or toxic derivatives, which is currently under the control of market makers and major banks such as UBS and numerous others. Kristen mentioned that the SEC is cautioning European regulators about its intention to implement faster settlement, aiming for either one-day settlement or zero-day settlement, essentially same-day settlement. This gradual approach is designed to encourage the closure of all short positions while preventing any potential collapse of the system. However, it's evident that the shorts face a significant challenge in closing out all AMC and GameStop shorts without causing a collapse in the system. This is primarily due to the overwhelming presence of counterfeit shares, saturating not only the U.S. financial markets, but also those in Europe. The situation is exacerbated by the crackdown on counterfeit practices by countries such as South Korea, India, Thailand, and China. It's just a question of time. On that note, Unusual Wales shared on Twitter that China's securities regulator will completely halt the lending of restricted shares starting from Monday. Presently, both short sellers are unable to short new stocks, and long shareholders also face restrictions on lending out their shares for short selling. Frank's Place posted on Twitter, reporting that China has formally restricted short selling in response to unsuccessful informal attempts to halt a deteriorating stock market decline. The new regulations state that investors purchasing shares will be prohibited from lending them out for short selling, with an agreed-upon lockup period. The implemented measures effective today are aimed at establishing a more equitable market order. It appears that China is currently making determined efforts to curb short selling in an attempt to salvage their stock market, which has witnessed a decline to levels not observed since approximately 2008, plummeting by more than 45% in the last three to four years. 
The situation might exacerbate unless China takes more drastic measures, like an outright ban on short selling, attempting to boost or pump up the market, possibly using methods involving Evergrande. Before delving into that, let's focus on China's efforts to ban counterfeit practices. Kristen shared on Twitter that China is intensifying its actions against counterfeit activities. Specifically, she mentioned that the MSCI China Index has experienced a 60% decline from its peak in February 2021. This is the reason why China is making extensive efforts to boost the market, involving measures like limiting lending and prohibiting short selling. This urgency is particularly heightened as China's Evergrande has received orders for liquidation. The real estate behemoth is burdened with a debt exceeding $300 billion in external loans and financing. As per a news article, a Hong Kong court has mandated the liquidation of Evergrande, the real estate developer with the highest global debt load after an unsuccessful attempt to restructure the company. What adds intrigue to this situation is Evergrande's substantial debt, amounting to $300 billion. Notably, a portion of this debt is owed to domestic banks within China. The remaining portion of the debt is attributed to offshore sources, including American lenders such as banks and hedge funds. In the event of liquidation, China is poised to prioritize the repayment of onshore Chinese debt, leaving the offshore American debt to be addressed afterward and potentially disregarded. Suppose Evergrande possesses approximately $30 billion in assets in contrast to its $300 billion debt. In such a scenario, Chinese banks would retain the $30 billion in assets, and American banks would not receive any payment. Consequently, a substantial portion of the $300 billion debt held by American banks, hedge funds, and market makers would likely be completely eliminated. In a tweet, Santa Surfing mentioned that Evergrande is getting ready for liquidation. The headline indicates that a crucial offshore bondholder group is set to support a petition for the developer's liquidation on Monday. The question raised is whether these offshore bondholders are American-based hedge funds or banks. Prepare for the initiation of a market downturn if that's the case. It's evident that numerous American banks, hedge funds, and market makers may soon face the necessity of acknowledging an extra $300 billion in actualized losses. These losses won't be merely unrealized, but rather substantial, potentially amounting to hundreds of billions of dollars in newly recognized losses. It will be intriguing to observe whether this leads to a situation akin to Archigos, where several banks, hedge funds, and market makers encounter substantial losses, ranging from $6 to $10 billion each. Recall the fallout from Archigos, where Credit Suisse, Nomura, and other banks, including Goldman Sachs, incurred significant losses in the realm of billions of dollars. Consequently, numerous stocks experienced a significant decline in their value, while others saw a substantial increase. This was a direct consequence of Bill H. Wang Hedge Fund having to unwind, closing both long and short positions. While Evergrande itself doesn't directly hold shares in companies or engage in long or short positions, the substantial losses incurred by banks are likely to prompt a reshuffling of their portfolios. The extent of restructuring observed in these banks, hedge funds, and market makers will determine the influence on us stocks, potentially affecting S&P 500 stocks or smaller ones. The direction of these stocks, whether they rise or fall, depends on the outcome of the liquidation. Until the process is completed, the exact losses incurred by these financial entities and the specific stocks affected will remain unclear. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.